no African country that allocates more than 1% of its GDP to research and development. And that is really one of the most alarming um, information and you know, wide, widely known facts about research in Africa. Um, in contrast, global research and development spending has soared to nearly $1.7 trillion with a majority of this um, expenditure attributed to just 10 nations, 10 countries across the globe. And of all these 10 nations, there's no single African country represented there. So this is just generally expenditure on research and development, not even on real estate or housing research. Just general expenditure on research is no African country that allocates more than 1% of its GDP to research and development. And currently in Africa, we are faced with an housing deficit of at least 51 million units according to the Center for Affordable Housing Finance. And it is obvious that with this kind of huge deficit, without comprehensive data and insights, addressing these challenges becomes a game of chance rather than a targeted effort. It becomes a thing where um, developers, financiers, um, and the market are not properly communicating with themselves. There's no, um, the, the, the um, value chain is not informed by data or by um, um, research, which means that most of the development happening across Africa is informed by intuition, guesswork, um, and just probability, just guesswork, the rule of thumb. And that continues to make the market to be perceived as a very risky market. In Africa, South Africa leads in scientific research expenditure, accounting for just 0.83% of the total in 2018, followed by Egypt at 0.72%. Meanwhile, in global science expenditure, we've seen an increase of about 19% from 2014 to 2018. And of this increase, China and the United States contribute to 63% of this growth. And what do these two nations or these two um, um, global giants have in common? It's that these are some of the biggest and most developed real estate markets across the globe. In fact, they are some of the biggest consumer markets across the globe, China and the United States. And that should... Um, give a kind of pointer that if this is what the global giants in consumer um, markets, real estate markets are doing, there must be a reason. <clears throat> there must be a value for them to expend this much on research and you know, align their um, product development with the market. So in South Africa, South Africa also has one of the leading REITs markets in Africa. And at the same time, South Africa is the leading um, research nation in Africa because even though South Africa also doesn't expend up to 1% of our GDP on research, it is still the, the most expenditure that any African nation makes in research and development in Africa. And that puts a challenge to us here today. The African Union estimates that over 400 million Africans, roughly 70% of Africa, are aged between 15 and 35. And these young people are migrating to urban areas in search of opportunities, in search of better living conditions, in search of, of uh, um, work opportunities. And that also has put a strain or demand on 
you know, new forms of housing, new opportunities for um, better living experiences. We've seen the expansion of cities, urban centers growing at a pace, at, at, at an unprecedented pace. And because the demand is there, um, many, uh, many of the, the developers and, and, and construction companies are loaded with this demand. But then the question remains that are, are the products available to these markets, are they aligned with what the market actually wants? Or what the market is actually capable of um, absorbing. Um, and that is where data-driven decision-making comes to help developers, real estate agents, um, um, built environment practitioners to make better decisions that would elevate, I mean, uh, uh, um, alleviate investment risk and, you know, reduce the perception of risk that investors have in the market. So as much as there's a huge population of young people moving to cities all over Africa and city development is expanding all over the continent, um, there is also that caution and that uh, hesitation by investors to enter some of these markets because of the perception that the, these markets are risky. There's little information about the end users or the consumers and the kind of products that these consumers are willing and able to uh, uh, um, um, to, to pay for. Because the, the, the willingness is a different thing. There's also the, the, the effective demand, the income um, um, or household income of the, the, the larger population of these um, city uh, inhabitants. So the lack of or the absence of data, data and insights hinders market attractiveness, and and that is something that um, a lot of of investors have have shared this uh, um, sentiment through um, several publications and and even interactions on platforms like the ARC conference. Um, failing to invest in data driven solutions therefore will deny the youth the chance to unlock capital assets injuring their prospects for a better future. We all know that real estate um, and, and property is, I think, probably one of the biggest capital bases that any person, any household can have. So when we are not providing data-driven solutions, we are denying the youth the chance um, to unlock capital assets. Uh, for example, when we are developing properties that are uh, probably more accessible to um, the older generation, um, not catering to the young population who are moving into the inner city, city areas, um, we, we definitely are going to be losing out on opportunities to um, transfer assets to the younger generation and give them the capacity to unlock capital for, for even local investments. So definitely, um, data-driven solutions will reshape the kind of products or, or redesign the kind of products that... that, that um, local players, regional players, and even international players bring to the market to make it easy for both the demand and supply side of all African nations can, can meet together properly. We can bring together these markets easily. Um, one interesting thing about um, uh, markets in Africa is that a lot of the the, the markets or, or the, the communities affected by the housing crisis are innovating. Um, we've seen you, um, Uganda's housing finance banks incremental housing product that was launched sometime um, early this year, um, an incremental housing product that specifically targets low income um, um, households and communities to be able to build their homes on incremental basis. Similarly, in South Africa, we have initiatives like, like the FLISP program, the RDP homes that are a little bit older than um, um, the older than some of the recent incremental housing products that have been introduced into the South African market. But these are new products that are being designed and being created to cater to the larger market. Um, Previously, we've seen a lot more of 
um, formal mortgage products being introduced into markets across Africa, which most of the time cater to the upper class. But now, as information and research and data insights grow, um, businesses and, and financiers and investors are starting to realize that there's a gap. There's a gap that these products are not um, catering to. And that is where some of these new products are, are being designed from. So in order for innovation to happen, data and insight is important. And, and of course, innovation and, in, uh, innovation and, 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 uh, um, and development only happen when we truly understand what is happening in the markets, what is happening and what, is, what are the hindrances and the opportunities that exist in a particular market. Um, another example of innovation is Nigeria's Federal Mortgage Bank loans that has had a number of years to mature and work with intermediary uh, organizations and banks to give opportunities to uh, employees and employees, both private and public sector employees in Nigeria through housing loans that are backed by the Federal Mortgage Bank. Before this solution was created, um, many people struggled, many Nigerians struggled to access uh, um, financing for their homes. But then data and research led up to this point. But there's so much more that Nigeria's um, housing market can unlock. And that is where research and data insights can help to start to, to, to understand what markets are we missing out on? What kind of solutions are we you know, missing out on by not innovating and not not really re, 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 redesigning the kind of products we create uh, for financing and for investment. We've also seen the rise of rent-to-own schemes. We've seen in, in Kenya the, the use of REITs and, and green bonds, you know, the, the opportunity for um, climate-friendly solutions are also growing in the housing sector. Currently, my research at the University of Johannesburg is focused on green housing finance, um, and, and the importance of um, financing projects that are climate friendly. And this is going to be our topic for a long time. Green financing uh, and climate fr friendly financing for, for the housing sector is going to be a, a growing trend in the next few years because of the fact that the housing sector is known to, to contribute to about 35% of global greenhouse uh, uh, um, gas emissions. And that is a huge contribution to greenhouse emissions that will need innovation in order to, to address it um, properly. It, it will require innovation, it will require uh, a particular uh, uh, um, focus on real insights and, and data that would help to create the kind of products that are, that are um, capable of tackling the climate change and the climate challenge that, that, are, that is happening all over the country. We, we also, as um, there was a huge flooding um, experience in Nigeria last year. Um, similarly, in parts of the KZN here in South Africa also, we've experienced major flooding that, that have impacted a lot of households and, and um, um, you know, displaced a lot of um, families. Definitely those people who have been displaced from their homes will need innovative solutions to cater to their housing needs. And that is where we need to start to look at what kind of solutions exist out there or what are, we, what are we missing in the big picture of how housing can be done in Africa? What kind of um, financing solutions can we create that would be more suited and adapted to the kind of uh, uh, um, uh, communities we have in Africa? It's very easy and simplistic to just adopt what is happening in, in the global north um, to the global south and say, okay, mortgages are working um, in, in, in the US, in China, so we must just import that and bring them to Africa. That's very easy to say. But the truth is that the larger population in Africa are going through a whole different experience and reality. Many of them operating in the informal market and definitely experiencing life very differently from consumers or end users in the global north. 
Many of the, 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 the larger population of African nations are informal and out of the, 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 they are incapable sometimes. In fact, a large number do not qualify for solutions like mortgages. And so if you are creating products or bringing developers that are going to offer mortgages, you are most likely not catering to the larger uh, uh, population of the nation. So these innovations that I've mentioned here, they require scaling up uh, and replication. They require increased capital investment. And that informs advocating the integration of professional um, data practices, you know, as a key to addressing the housing crisis effectively. We, we need to see more professionals participating in data, data uh, uh, um, collection, data management, data, um, um, even data analytics. We need to see um, that integration between the, the research community and industry um, um, players so that decisions are, are, are built on valuable insight and clear uh, um, problem statements clear problems identified, clear audiences. This is the target market of the solution we are creating. This is what the, 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 um, the demographic of the audience that our solution caters to. It, it makes it very much targeted so that the solutions actually reach the, 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 the most needed places. The solutions we are creating, they become solutions that actually reach the most the, the, the communities where they are most needed. So African markets must become more transparent, easier to understand and better regulated to attract more and better informed investors. This is critical. This is critical. With more information, with more data, we, 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 we can see more transparent markets. Quality data simplifies the process of extracting insights for decision makers. So when we have practitioners and research um, um, faculties, research institutions collaborating, we can have very valuable quality, uh, 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 quality databases that when extracted will give insights to decision makers that will help them make decisions faster and with less um, um, apprehension for you know the market housing research demands the collective effort of data practitioners and researchers across the continent we have such a huge disconnect between practitioners and researchers we need to have a connect that allows data flow between industry and the research uh, uh, um, um, community because what we see happening is a lot of research is being put out there in some institutions across the continent and this research are just um, sort of redundant in databases where they are not even being used by the industry practitioners. At the same time, industry is hesitant to contribute to um, data collection such that um, they can be, you know, a, a clear understanding of the kind of market that practitioners are playing in um, and solutions can be tailored to to the to the to the true picture of things we we have a lot of foreign um, experts speaking about the African market when there are local practitioners regional practitioners who are on the ground doing all of the work and yet not they are not the ones really supplying the information about the market. So that gap needs to be to be closed. That gap needs to be, you know, reduced. While there's, you know, substantial research happening across the content, uh, continent, increased awareness and collaboration are vital. There are some valuable data sources already growing across the continent, like um, Housing Finance Africa's um, Housing, that, that's the Center for Affordable Housing Finance yearbook. So every year, the Center for Affordable Housing Finance has continued to, to, to develop um, a yearbook where data across Africa is collected to, so, to, to give a kind of overview and general picture of what is happening in 
um, housing finance markets or housing real estate markets across the continent. And that is a brilliant resource that has been built over the years. It's a great platform. We, we have platforms like Estate Intel, um, also built, particularly started, the uh, Estate Intel started in Nigeria, but now I, I, I believe that they also are, are, are collecting data on markets like Kenya, Ghana, and South Africa. Um, we have the African Real Estate Society's conference publications and several local institutions across the continent who are also um, producing research. Many of the students are already out there gathering data and publishing them, but this data sometimes is either not properly organized or not original enough or not valuable enough because they didn't they, they they couldn't have easy access to industry players so these are these are some of the the the, the starting points some of the research journeys that are that i believe are already doing some of the work that um my presentation is is trying to um advocate for um some of my recommendations for ARC participants, uh, investors who are here, um, researchers, academic, um, um, academic members, and those in the industry, is that one, we support research in academic institutions through grants, bursaries, and scholarships. And of course, when we support this research, we also then um, support the kind of research that would inform our own business development and business growth. So that is the first recommendation. My second recommendation will be that we mob mobilize private sector support for data and research labs. So we, we need to look at um, the role that developers and um, 